to a topic plagiarism and reference manager software training today and uh, one thing i would like to confirm is that we are going to give more weightage on plagiarism software working and finally we are giving a touch on reference manager so one thing i would like to share to all is that you can stop me whenever you come across any questions and the session is going to be purely interactive so i really don't want everyone to switch on your video or audio to respond to my question kindly use this wonderful provision of this chat box so uh, if you have any questions you can post it in the chat box even if i raise any questions if you uh, if you are ready to answer you can just use the chat box for the same so first uh, blindly i'm going to ask you one question what is your understanding about plagiarism just put it in the chat box in a single word anyone according to you what is mean by plagiarism perfect duplication copying similarities copying others work unethical theft from ideas works perfect that, the act of copying another person's idea excellent excellent ma'am yes so i think you all have some basic perception towards plagiarism so now we are just going in detail about plagiarism and uh whenever the scholar or a researcher comes up with something and the researcher and scholar always thinks that whatever he done is perfect and correct but only when we scrutinize such data we come to know whether it is plagiarism or not so today uh we are going to attend this presentation with an objective that once this presentation gets over we all gather and learn about plagiarism how it works and how we can avoid in our research Work. So the plan of presentation, we are just going to understand what is plagiarism, why does plagiarism matter, why to avoid plagiarism, plagiarism detecting software, whether we should use free or the subscribed one, how plagiarism software works, is there any tips that we can follow to avoid plagiarism in our research writing, whether we can trick the plagiarism detection software through any ways, we are going to learn today. And we are going to have a live demo of plagiarism software with the help of Woodkun or original software. So first, as you all said, plagiarism is presenting someone else's work or ideas as your own without due acknowledgement or without the consent of the original player of the research. And the plagiarism can be both printed as well as electronic. And plagiarism may be intentional or even unintentional. But whether it is intentional or unintentional, it is considered to be an offence. So all we need to understand with regard to plagiarism is, first we need to agree that plagiarism is a pure form of an offence, whether you do it intentionally or unintentionally. So we have several types of plagiarism. We have complete plagiarism, where we just like they lift others' work and we just include it, incorporate the same in our research work. Source-based plagiarism, where you provide incorrect referencing or citations. Direct plagiarism, just simple copy-paste. Auto-plagiarism, reusing major part of uh, others' work without providing any due consent. Paraphrasing plagiarism, yes, this seems to be very common, where you lift all the content, you just sit and paraphrase by changing vocabulary, synonyms and every related thing, and you just copy-paste the same. We have mosaic plagiarism where you just interlay someone's work within your text. For example, if uh, you are writing on one topic, the similar data related to someone's work will be incorporated in between the sentences of your own work. So that's called as mosaic plagiarism. It literally means how we lay mosaic tiles in the flooring. Accidental plagiarism is pure form of intentional. Uh, to be very frank that Majority of them, once identified with this plagiarism act, all they say is, I did it in an in, un, unintentional way or accidentally I come across this act. But still, we cannot escape from this offensive matter. And finally, inaccurate authorship. Whenever authorship is provided, due acknowledgement should be provided to all the contributors. 
when you are not providing due acknowledgement to the contributors definitely it's also been a part of plagiarism now the question amongst us is why plagiarism really matters because even today we are all coming together in this nice evening to discuss only about the plagiarism why does it really matters to us being uh, uh, being in academic uh, arena or in the research arena why we are all very much need to be careful about plagiarism because plagiarism plagiarism is a breach of academic integrity just imagine without a piece of academic integrity how can we even sustain in this uh, academic field or in this research uh, uh, field so it's very we need to be very careful to avoid plagiarism because it just with one single act your academic integrity will be spoiled or it will be breached now it's all about the principle of intellectual honesty clear so being an enriched academic community we all need to have intellectual honesty when you indulge in any kind of plagiarism act automatically your honesty will be depleted and plagiarism is just a symbolic view of poor scholarship your learning process will completely put into a question when you indulge in plagiarism act and finally very simple it's against research ethics your future career will be comes into a greater question because uh, we can come across several case studies especially in abroad nations european or american nation even people will be just eliminated from their employment because of indulging in plagiarism so now we can totally understand the plagiarism that really matters a lot for our uh, research life or even your academic career now this is a very shocking uh, news that was released during july 2019 that 982 papers from india retracted for plagiarism image duplication and manipulation these are all various forms of plagiarism like image duplicating and manipulating the data and everything so i think uh, majority of you would have come across this retraction of research papers which means you will be publishing your paper at one certain point of time it will also be published by the journal and later on the journal identifies that you have manipulated the data or you have uh, indulged in any image duplication you have info you have did some fraudulent act with this research work or if you have included any form of plagiarism act your paper will be retracted when the paper is retracted it will be published in this form and nowadays the retraction paper seems to be very common but the very sad part of retraction is that which country seems to be most common in retraction and also in plagiarism can somebody notify which country is being often popped up in coming to plagiarism yes it's just us so india seems to be just topping the ranks of uh, the research papers which are often being retracted especially 982 papers were retracted uh, which belongs to india so far and 330 have been retracted for plagiarism and 119 papers for image duplication image duplication normally with regard to sciences normally the image duplication plays a major role but for as of, as far as social sciences is concerned that we normally uh, uh, proceed with this framework and modeling and number of papers retracted for image issues has suddenly increased since 2016 with 37 papers retracted in 2018 alone so this is what a live example where we are all uh, need to be very careful and be aware of plagiarism to make sure that our papers never been retracted at all and this is a right thing for even uh, academic uh, uh, people of india to concentrate more on this plagiarism aspects with regard to their research contribution so this diagram will clearly shows how the retraction papers increased since 2000 till 2015 you can see the balloon is getting reduced because still these papers which are published in the past 5 years are in research and in the graph you can see during 1997 the papers retracted were just 62 but within 10 years the retraction has just numbered to 419 and on 2014 it was around 1000 that is 946 so now what is the guide to avoid plagiarism because now we somewhat get a theoretical picture or a 
overall understanding about plagiarism, why it is important, how it works, what is the real uh, problem with regard to plagiarism, retraction and everything. But now, our intention is to escape from plagiarism. So what is the real guide that we have to avoid plagiarism? So these are the five common steps that uh, we, we can actually follow to avoid plagiarism. First, to improve your note taking followed by having a thorough knowledge in your research and knowing a correct paraphrasing form and know how to cite and also please seek help if you really need to avoid plagiarism. We are just going to see one by one. So what is note taking? What are the aspects that we need to really be very careful? So note taking is just taking a, con a consistent aspect of the paragraph or a material that you actually coming across and whenever you read pages and pages of research papers being a researcher you should always have a habit of taking notes so that you can actually condense the data and you can make it as a busy writing and later you can extend in your own style so note taking is a very basic tip that everybody can consider to avoid plagiarism so whenever you read any material don't ever have an intention of doing a copy paste or just jot down everything into your work. Just take notes out of it. So when you take notes, normally you just take the important points and you will scribble it in your scribble pad and later you will explain it on your own style. In that way, you can get rid of this plagiarism. Second, thoroughly research your subject. So I think review of literature is a very nice way that we can get better understanding about your subject. And especially when you indulge in writing an article, a thorough review of literature by reviewing 50, 60, 100 articles will definitely, it's a time consuming process, no doubt about it, but still it's very useful for your research writing. When you read more articles, you gain more thorough understanding about your subject. So there is no need for you to uh, get into the act of plagiarism. Now know how to paraphrase correctly. So this is a very tricky work, paraphrasing what normally people often do is they just take the content, they just paraphrase by changing its vocabulary first and they try to add synonymous words with the help of thesaurus or online uh, softwares and they try to even convert the language which the actual material is in and uh, they always go for uh, just changing of the sentence sequences or replacing of sentences, but that is not a real paraphrasing. Just see how a real paraphrasing should be. Paraphrasing is just conceiving all the idea of the research article or the material that you are coming across and you have to just put your own voice in your research work. This means you hear something and you deliver in your own style. Similarly, you read something and you have to deliver it in your own writing style. That is the correct form of paraphrasing. We are just going to even uh, see some examples of paraphrasing in the upcoming slides. Am I audible? Is the screen is visible? Are you all awake? Can yes, I see yes, some yes. SR now? Yes, sir. It's audible, Perfect. Perfect. Very Perfect. Good, sir. Very thank good. you. Thank you. Because sometimes the problem with the lecture virtually is we never know who is sleeping or awake. So it's always be active with the chat box. Can I see more yes in the chat box now? Yes, Deepa ma'am and Deepti ma'am, I will work on my audio now. Yes, can I see more yes in the chat box? Perfect, perfect. Thank you, thank you all. So now we are coming to the third point. You should know how to cite. So citation is basically understandable in a form of referencing and you should know the exact citation style of your work for example if you are incorporating any research article research work into your research writing definitely you should know how to cite your work the basic form of citation is we have in-text citation and we have a referencing part in the in-text citation normally we use last name of the author and we use the year of publication and these kind of citations always changes from one style to another. Like we have MLA style, we have APA style, we have Chicago style of uh, referencing and citation. So we have to incorporate such citations accordingly. And finally, 
there is no problem and no issues in asking help if you really need of identify nice research mentor and just get and see if anybody's help those who are ready to help you to avoid plagiarism because major as i already informed majority of the issue with plagiarism is all about doing something unintentionally and accidentally so if you are doubtful please stop there and you seek somebody's help and then you proceed with it now plagiarism detecting software i think i have given a basic review about all these concepts theoretically and now we are directly getting into this plagiarism software so i think these are the various type of uh, plagiarism detecting softwares that we come across both online and even a uh, subscribed or a free kind of software and when coming to plagiarism detecting software we have two major types one is free another one is subscribed when you uh, indulge in free plagiarism detecting software normally it's there in online we have plagiarism plagiarism checker plagium copy leaks plague scan small seo tools everything but one point with the free online plagiarism detecting software is it has its own limitations to a limitation of database as well as limitation of words to be checked for plagiarism and we have plagiarism detecting software which is subscribed the very popular software across the globe is turnit and followed by identikit and we have original the early name of original is urkun which are ugc actually recognize urkun software for all the universities even our institutions can scrap uh, subscribe urkun software free of charge if you are registered so now before going into the next topic my question is do we need to use free plagiarism detecting software or subscribed one you can just update in the chat box either free or subscribed i think participants can just type in whether we should use free softwares or subscribed softwares you can even use yes for subscribed and f for free if you feel uh, not comfortable to type in perfect perfect so i can see more subscribed can somebody tell me why subscribed software is good why free softwares we should not use anyone can explain you can just unmute and explain subscribed software our our content will be uh, safety in the particular databases unsubscribed uh, softwares we don't know where our content will be there okay okay perfect sir thank you shiva sir is harini ma'am would you like to share something uh, sir good evening sir same sir i also wanted to tell you the same thing like uh, there's a chance of uh, taking the data okay thank you thank you to both but now i am just going to reveal one thing sir one more yes. thing yes sir yes please sir one more thing sir uh, sorry to interview apart no from that yes, uh, there are chances uh, the accuracy of information sir. perfect perfect yes the accuracy of information yes. plays a major role great and i'm just going to disclose one thing more than an online software your data will be stored in the database of subscribed software at the large level okay and why we need to the answer is very simple we have to go for subscribed software it's always better to avoid free plagiarism software because the accuracy of plagiarism similarity index is actually been a big question mark in a free plagiarism softwares for example when you use a free plagiarism software as shiva sir and harini ma'am insisted your data will be stored no doubt about it so the database is actually very small whatever the content they come across online which is a free access alone be saved in that database where they are providing a free service but with regard to a subscribed uh, plagiarism softwares where the subscription rate is ranging from uh, 2 lakhs to even 4 lakhs for a for a very good plagiarism detecting software because the play the material can even cross check with the database which are all subscribed database which means the plagiarism detecting software which are subscribed will also pay some money to several database to get so you can find billion of database will be used for checking for plagiarism with regard to your content which you upload so as uh, as chandrakantan sir mentioned 
the similarity index varies from one software to another no doubt about it but the accuracy level will be more appropriate in the subscribe software so it's always good that if your institution install a subscribe software even a basic subscribe plagiarism detecting software so that you can uh, utilize it more to uh, get rid of this plagiarism issue so now we are going to see how the plagiarism software works first we have to submit the document in varied form you can do a direct submission you can just submit through an email with the plagiarism software whichever you are using you can use either Turnitin or Authenticate or even Utkund or Original whatever then what the software actually do is they will just cross verify your material with their database the database will have an access to billions of databases so they will just compare your materials and here comes the accuracy work where the machine learning places a major role the machine learning will process a material with the text matches with strings of words when i use this term strings which actually means if your sentence has five words it's a five string it's a string of five words similarly all the strings will be matched one by one to identify the plagiarism then whether you did any paraphrasing you will be caught here if you are just changing any synonyms and vocabulary the machine learning softwares will identify it if you translate any language again it will identify and finally the report will be generated based on the similarity index and uh, can somebody tell me what is the accepted similarity index for social sciences or even sciences as per university norms or of any uh, research norms 30 percentage for a phd thesis in university okay, okay perfect perfect yes others can uh, even except, type in. except languages and the mathematics okay okay perfect perfect sir Okay, now I'm just going to post you one question. What is our objective or a goal with regard to a similarity index? When we write, what should be our objective of having a similarity index? Is it 10%, 5%, 20%, 30%? How we should aim? with regard to a similarity index. Can I see some more responses in the chat box? Okay, less than 10%. I think the responses seems to be stopped. What should be exactly? We should appreciate Dr. Nina ma'am because our aim and objective should be 0% of similarity. Then only you will be considered as a person who never indulge in plagiarism. You just work it about the software result. But in our heart and mind, we need to be highly ethical with regard to research proceeding. Our aim should be zero. Even if the software shows 10% or 5%, even 20%, appropriate justification should be provided for your similarity index, where your level will always be zero. So from today onwards, we all need to be thinking and keeping an objective or a goal of plagiarism similarity index should always be zero for our research work we should never get any way we should never get into any act of plagiarism with an objective of zero whether the university may decide 10 percent 20 percent or 30 percent but we should work for zero person so that we can get a better piece of work research work so now tips for avoiding plagiarism we already underwent a very short guide. Now, we are going to undergo a few tips for plagiarism free writing based on the software. So far, what we discussed is theoretically. Now, we are just moving on to a technical part. So, again, I'm coming back to a very uh, prominent way of avoiding plagiarism that is paraphrasing, followed by quotations, description in brackets using abbreviations and valid citation styles clear and you may think why i been like repeating now we are going to see each and every aspect individually so first what is mean by paraphrasing for example this is an original text okay starting with the sentence go back to 50 years in american and european history and ending with a nice citation if it's paraphrased what can be done 
Uh, I'll be just asking a question you can use yes or no. First paraphrasing tip. Can I change the vocabulary? Can I see some yes or no in the chat box? If I'm going to indulge in paraphrasing technique, can I change the vocabulary? Okay. Yes. The answer seems to be yes. Perfect. Can I use synonyms for the words? Can I use synonyms for the words? Pick yes. Okay. Fine. Can I use some words that are typically available in the paragraph? Can I use any similar words? Can I use any similar words that are there in the original text? Okay, I can see some yes. Perfect. And finally, can I use any kind of translation? For example, I can take some French paragraph and I can translate it in English. Can I do that for a paraphrasing? Okay. Perfect. I think you're all very clear with the paraphrasing. But now I would like to just add a few things. When you do a paraphrasing, it should be like this. You should not concentrate on vocabulary. You should not concentrate on the synonyms. You should not concentrate on the translation of the language. You should also don't concentrate on the exact words that needs to be used. All you need to do is, as I mentioned in the guidance part, you should take a notes of this paragraph. Then you have to deliver it in your own style without missing the theme and essence of the paragraph. Here when you see the original text is similarly being cited here. But the original text is around like 7 to 10 line sentences. But here it's just 4 to 5 lines. This is what a correct paraphrasing is all about. Just see, here they have constituted on 18th century. The 18th century is in word, here it is a number. But that, is, that doesn't make any significance. Here the major theme is all about this wilderness word in English language. That is what they are talking about. So they are just using that exact term that is necessary to be used here. Otherwise, whatever the add-on that is given here is completely their own writing style. If you do this kind of a paraphrase text, you can actually get relief from plagiarism. Otherwise, if you are going to use vocabulary, synonyms, language translations, it will never help you. Now, second point, using quotations. Whenever you feel that one particular material should be incorporated in your research work, just use quotations. Because the quotation clearly says that is not your work. And when you use quotation, give a due credit to the author. Here it's very clear. According to Cronon, the concept of wilderness is a cultural invention. So in the words of Cronon, it's been given in a quotation and proper citation is provided. So whenever you want to incorporate any definitions, or any material directly lifted and to be added, all you need to do is just add quotations because the plagiarism detecting softwares will exclude the quotations content. Clear? Because it's very clear when you quote something, it's not out of your voice and you're just giving a due uh, acknowledgement to the author and also proceeding with the proper citation. And third thing, description in brackets. Okay. So, uh, I can see that many research work or thesis, especially a project report, always you want to describe something with the definitions, meanings, synonyms, every add-on to the content. If you are indulging on such matters, automatically we concentrate more on using a similar word that is already there in a the literature. But in that case, what you can actually do is, when you feel some words are very common, some definitions, some meanings are very common. Some abbreviations, acronyms are very common. Then you can actually incorporate those items within a bracket to substantiate your work. For example, here, the second sentence is very clear. Typically, suppliers specify air to cloth ratios of 6 to 1 or higher. But however, you want to give some additional information of a threshold, you can add those additional information within bracket. Clear? And also, normally whenever you give any citation, all the citations are considered to be a copied item because whenever you use a citation, it's going to be similar for everybody. 
that's why we are using a parenthetical citation because this content will not be read by the plagiarism softwares. And whenever you use any abbreviations or acronym, it always better you use the explanation within the brackets. But we always have an uh, habit have a habit that if you use ISRO, we actually write ISRO within brackets. If you use uh, similarly here, if you use NASA, we write National Aeronautics and Space Administration and within bracket we use NASA. So you can even use it in this way to avoid a repetition of words which will be caught in the plagiarism detecting software. So the content that is within brackets will be eliminated. Now usage of abbreviations. So whenever you want to use some uh, sentences or statements, for example, just see. Ayan order Janak Yamal College. You can use this sentence or a name of your college only at one place of your document. In all the following places, you can just use A and J A C, which seems to be unique for your work. If it's going to be Madras Assistant College, it can be M C C. For example, if my research report is on rural women empowerment, I can just use rural women empowerment and within bracket I can give R W E. Across the report, I can use just RWE in a place of rural women empowerment. I think the last sentence is a very good example where a researcher has started his writing by providing World Health Organization within brackets WHO and also South African Medical Association within bracket SAMA. And in all the following statements, he just used WHO and SAMA. So this is how you can actually reduce your plagiarism thing because in the way of avoiding a repetitive words and sentences. And finally, valid citations type. I am not uh, giving any technical details or definitions on citation styles. All you need to be very aware is about various citation styles that are available. And we have an APA which is American Psychological Association citation style which is used by education, psychology and sciences related research work. Followed by Modern Language Association, which is very common for humanities and the social sciences. And Chicago style is generally used by business related studies, history and finance. And you can see a mild difference between all these referencing styles or citation styles. Being a researcher, you need to be very thorough with the citation styles and before uh, submitting any paper with the research uh, journal, and, a, and before submitting a thesis, you should read all the guidelines properly. An appropriate citation style should be incorporated. And usage of citations is all about when the content is seems to be plagiarized. And if it's been properly cited, then the reviewer will easily understand that this content is not something that is plagiarized because the author has given due acknowledgement to the uh, piece of work which has actually been lifted or incorporated from somebody's work. So due acknowledgement should be provided to the author with the help of appropriate citations. So these are the various ways that uh, we can actually reduce our plagiarism uh, index or similarity index. But now I'm just going to quickly ask some question. How the plagiarism detection software is whether we can trick it. So all I need to see is yes or no. If it is yes, just put Y in the chat box. If it's no, just add N in the chat box. First, can you trick the plagiarism detection software with paraphrasing? Yes or no? Can I see Y or N in the chat box? Okay. I got few responses now. Okay. Happy that many are still awake. Good. Okay, so you all said yes. Okay, we will reveal the answers later. Now, second question is, can you turn the content in a form of an image and escape from plagiarism software? For example, just you take a content in writing, you just con convert that into an image and you just incorporate in your Word document. Can you escape from the plagiarism software? Okay, I can see more yes, yes, good sir, Ambresh sir, no idea, I can understand, okay. Now I can see more no, okay. Now next, can we use different languages and symbols to trick the plagiarism detection software? Yes or no? 
Okay, no. I think you are becoming very alert now. Next question. Shall we change the word order in a sentence to get rid of plagiarism? Just changing the word order in a sentence. Okay, why am I seeing so much of no? Now, okay. Using synonyms in the paper, will it help to get rid of plagiarism? Using synonyms, no. Next, get help from editing services. Editing services, because nowadays many journals are providing editing services, many uh, entities and institutions are providing editing services. Can you reduce plagiarism? Okay, I can, I receive few yes, few no. Lastly, Adding plain or blank spaces or characters in between the words. This usually happens, right? Because when you add a plain spaces or characters in between the words, will it help? Okay, no. Seriously? Okay. Now we are just going to see the answer for everything. Whether paraphrasing to be plagiarism detection. The answer is actually no. But if you're doing a proper paraphrasing, which I, as I mentioned, if you take notes and if you deliver the content in your own style, which is not a real paraphrasing, then you can reduce the plagiarism. Then turning it as, as an image, you will be get caught easily with the plagiarism detecting software. So it's no. Use different languages and simple. Again, no, because the software uses machine learning. All majority of the languages across global context will be read by the software. Changing the word order in a sentence? No way, because every word will be read in a form of a string. And the machine learning artificial intelligence will quickly uh, see all the word manipulations if it's replaced. Few synonyms in the paper? Obvious no. It will read all the thesaurus definitions. It will dictionate all the words. Definitely you cannot be escaping from it. Get help from editing services. This will help to avoid accidental plagiarism. This is what I would like to say. If you give your work for editing services, they will see whether you have appropriately given all view acknowledgement to the authors, you have used appropriate citations, then automatically your plagiarism rate will be decreased. So it will help to a certain extent. And finally, adding blank spaces or characters in between the words. You may think how characters can be added. Our people are very brainy, right? They will just add X in, instead of space and they just trick the play. They think that they can trick the plagiarism software and they can get rid of it, but that will not work. Uh, I will show some examples when we uh, deal with the plagiarism software uh, during a, a, a demo. So from this, I would like to clearly say that uh, tricking plagiarism detection software should not be our job at all. Clear? So all we need to work is to properly provide a piece of research work without plagiarism. And now we are just going on to a real work of plagiarism, how it really works with the help of original softwares. I'm just stopping my share uh, screen now. Stop. Uh, I'm just stop sharing my screen now. Just bear with me for a minute. So when you use, can you all see the screens, friends? Can you see the yes, screen? Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. I think the network seems to be a bit poor. It's taking time. So this is the login page of uh, this original software. All you need to do is you need to get your institutional access. Your username, that is your email ID will be added to it. 
and you just need to have your own password and sign into the uh, open software. This is how the page works, and this is my login of Chinnamuthu Balu, and you have all the reports that has been already uploaded. When you see this home page, is it all visible? Can I hear some yes or no? Yes, sir. Is it visible, perfect. sir? Perfect. Yes. Sir. yes. So here in the similarity, you can actually see all the similarity index. Okay, and all the documents will be provided as submission ID, and data uploaded will be seen here. And here we have create or upload option, and the create folder or upload files will help you to just upload some documents, and you can just select it from your folder and upload. And again, this is the inbox page, and if you delete something, it will be there in the thing. So if your institutions having an access, it, it will be always helpful for a faculty to get an institutional uh, uh, institutional access to work on this software. Now I will show you how the report of the plagiarism software will uh, will be proceeded with. Just give me a minute. Meanwhile, can you just enter into your chat box or y'all before your laptop? If uh, can y'all give uh, do some two minutes or three minutes piece of work? If I give some small work for you to draft, can you do that? Can I see some S or no in the chat box? If I give a small yes, uh, work, can you do it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Perfect. Can you see the screen now? Yes, sir. Okay. So whenever you upload any documents, once you click each item in the inbox, you will come up with this analysis overview, and you'll be having one, two, three, four, five. Depends upon your content. All you need to do is you just need to see the similarity index. So, what is the similarity index of this document? It is it is can somebody tell me? Perfect. 79 percent. Yes. Very high percent. Now we are just going to see how this original software has processed our data. Can you see the findings in the left hand side? Matching text where the text starts, the similarity of the text has been matched, and unusual characters has been used. Cross languages translation from some other language has been identified. So this is the overall analysis of uh, the original software that is plagiarism detecting software. Now all you need to do is you just need to give this view the entire document. Okay. So this is the entire document option. So what is the three indicators that we have here? Quotes, brackets. Perfect. Detailed text, Detail text differences. Excellent. Okay. So now normally the quotes and brackets will always be unchecked because, as I told earlier, the content that is counted. Uh, that is provided within quotes and brackets will not be considered for running a plagiarism so it will always be unchecked just see if i just check the quotes you can see all the quotes being highlighted can you see this when you go for it all the quotes will be highlighted but normally the person who is reviewing it will always uncheck it similarly when you use brackets Whatever the content that is provided in the brackets will also be unchecked. This is the reason why I have insisted you all to provide more definitions and meaning repetitive content within brackets and quotations. Clear? But this detailed text differences will always be on. This is what the real uh, essence of plagiarism detecting software, where whatever the content has been copied will be shown here. When the content is highlighted in this orange color, what does it mean? It is just copied and pasted in the work. And this four triangle thing, if you touch that, 
it will show you how much percentage of the text has been matching. Can you see the matching percent? It is around 99%. So the submitted document has literally taken the content somewhere online. And you must be curious at where these contents been lifted. You can just go down and see. It's been lifted from? It's been lifted from Wikipedia. 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 Yes. Wikipedia. yes. Yeah. And also it has given plus 22 alternative resources. Clear? And you can see all the alternative resources one by one. So first thing all you need to be very much aware is about you should review the entire document where are all the copy paste work has been done. And now what you can do is you can see the overall sources of copied and pasted. So this person has used the source of Wikipedia, bib.irb and diversela for copying all the content. And nearly 50.14% of the 79 has been copied from Wikipedia, 27 has been copied from Bib, and 0.77% has been copied from Diver Sailor. This is how the reviewer will catch you when you indulge in plagiarism. Now, findings part. Findings part, the very first thing will show you a matching text. Now, I'm just moving on to the second type of plagiarism that is prevailing in this document. So, the first is four. Square is all about matching text. The second thing will be saying as scrupulously long words. Clear? So can you see what this guy has done? Diving X with X bubbles X of carbon monoxide. Which means what this fellow must have done is he has given all this XXX by replacing the space and he just make this font color as white. Hope you all understand what I'm trying to explain. How the scrupulous language has been done. Or you want me to just type written and show it. For example, and I just talk screen and I will just, uh, I will just uh, come again. Yeah, Can you see this document now? No, sir. Okay, one moment. Just give me a minute. Please bear with me. Very sorry for this technical inconvenience. Just pro proceeded with my entire screen now. Just tell me once the screen is visible. Is it visible now? No, sir. Yes, sir. Perfect. So I've just copied this content and I have pasted it in a Word document. 
can you see the word document content here yes sir this seems to be a very long right and what people have actually done is this x will be given a font color of white and this x will be given a font color of white and this x will be given a font color of white this is how the document is being submitted can you understand but the software has easily captured this thing because it has considered it is a suspiciously long words so even if you think to trick the software with this kind of things the software will not consider it because it's a super smart software it will always be catching you up very easily hope you all understand this part yes sir is it still confusing because i want to go, go bit slow because i want to be very clear with each and every aspect of the software okay i think i can move on to the next part of the software now so the third thing is translation here it is in spanish here it is in english can you see the difference yes sir here this is how people always translate the research work and they will just translate it in english but this will not work with the software because the software is very good in identifying all this so this is what i would like to just highlight whenever you be using plagiarism detecting software you always aim for 0% when you aim for 0% you always be very careful to use appropriate guidance if you don't know anything seek help so this matching text and long words and this translation paraphrasing nothing will be helpful for as of as of now the plagiarism is being uh, considered clear so do you have any questions on this plagiarism software